George Osborne clearly wants us to see this as what after 2010 to 2015, which he described as the rescue mission for the economy, to the rebuilding of the economy. And we should not lose sight in the detail of one of the things he said right at the beginning of the speech is that by 2020, the state will make up 35% of national income compared to nearly 50% when he first took office as chancellor. That is a very significant reshaping of the balance of the economy in the country. Fascinatingly, though, the huge cheers from the Conservative benches today don't hide the fact that there were big climb downs in there. They were not about his political ideology or rhetoric, but about reality. Firstly, most importantly, on tax credits. Not tinkering, not tweaking, but dropping those cuts all together, although there will still be cuts to universal credit, its replacement, but I'm sure we'll discuss that in a bit later. But that is a big victory for the House of Lords, for the Labour Party, for some Tory backbenchers, of course, including Boris Johnson. The second big climb down on something that we expected was not cutting that police budget at all. Now, many people believe in the last few days in Westminster, after what happened in Paris, it was just not politically possible to go ahead with the kinds of cuts that had been expected. And it's turned out not to be. In Indeed, it has turned out not to be political, politically possibly. Interestingly, two very big changes. Labour will claim them as victories. But of course, rather conveniently from George Osborne, that kills off two of Labour's strongest attacks on the government mm. at a time when, let's face it, they've not been very effective at coming up with ways of putting him under pressure. I want to come to Robert Pess in a minute because some of this fiscal arithmetic needs mm. a bit of delving into. Before I do, Kamal, what is the takeaway for business in this? Well, I think, Andrew, what we're seeing and, and, and how actually um, uh, George Osborne can balance uh, those books is a huge movement of costs in, uh, I think, three pretty significant ways. Firstly, there's the social care issue. Mm. So uh, a new tax uh, raising power will be given to local authorities to pay for social care. Um, certainly private care providers who are complaining about the cost of social care will say that the £2 billion raised from that won't go far enough, still be a £1 billion shortfall. So he's moved costs there from central government onto local government. And then the apprenticeship levy, mm. £3 billion to be raised from the largest private business businesses for funding three million apprentices, he says, by uh, 2020. Again, putting it the duty on the private sector to deliver on things like skills so vital to um, our economy and, of course, on housing. Uh, direct funding support for housing businesses, building companies to actually build uh, houses themselves. Again, saying private sector, it's up to you to solve the supply side problem in housing. As I said before, um, uh, the Chancellor stood up. There are lots of questions about that, whether the housing industry can actually deliver and even wants to deliver. And got frankly, the skills to deliver. And too. got the skills uh, to uh, deliver, very, very importantly. The whole issue, this will be a monotonous uh, repetition over the next few weeks, the whole issue about announcing big numbers on things like capital investment, on transport, they're only announcements, they're not delivery. Mm. And the government has found it difficult to deliver the big schemes that the Chancellor says we need to uh, make sure our economy is thriving in the future. So I think the big picture, as we discussed before the autumn statement was delivered, is that there is a big move from responsibility on the state to responsibility on local authorities, devolved powers and the private sector to deliver. All right. Now, Robert, uh, here's a Chancellor that says he's going to balance the budget and read run a surplus, that he is not increasing any major taxes, though there, is ta there are tax rises built in into this. He's spreading money around all over the place, yet he still says he'll reach the, the, the surplus. Um, uh, is, there, is there something going on here that we don't yet know about? Because it does seem suspicious. Well, he's been bailed out by the Office for Budget Responsibility, the forecasting agency that he created, forecasting significantly higher tax revenues than it was expecting only in July and, significant, and a significant reduction in interest payments on the government's big debt. Um, and so just to be clear, that is not to do with new taxes imposed today. No. That is just the OBR being more optimistic. And it says that the reason it is more optimistic is because it's got new data on the rate at which taxes are now being paid, which has allowed it to make what it thinks is a rational judgment. Now, let's be clear. These, ju these are judgments. They are not unbelievably accurate scientific forecast. The OBR might get it wrong. But... 
George Osborne is banking that windfall. And you can see that in perhaps the most important statement in the Office of Budget Responsibility's enormous book that it publishes when it says the direct effect of the government's policy decisions has been to push borrowing higher between 2016 to 17 and 2019 to 20. Now what that means is that the things that he's done today, reversing, for example, the cuts in tax credits, for example, uh, freezing the budget for the police, mm. have the, and, and actually limiting cuts in individual departments, uh, the cuts in departments are significantly less than, than the we, speculation than we expect. was. Well, indeed. no, also than he outlined. Let's be absolutely yeah. clear. You know, there are going to be about 12 billion versus the 20 billion mm. that he was talking about only a few weeks ago. So the direct effect of all of that is to push borrowing higher, but borrowing actually comes down because the OBR thinks that the economy's ability to generate taxes is better than it was. Now, to, also just to, to, to I reinforce want to the point, but, but very quickly, just to reinforce the point that Kamal makes, and there is, of course, I mean, I read about it in my blog today, this big shift that he's making. You, you read your own blog. I occasionally read my own blog. Um, <laughs> you know, this, there is this big shift, which is terribly important in all this, in terms of shifting costs of doing quite a lot of the stuff that we expect the state to do mm -hmm. from the state to the private all sector. Right.